Economic liberty includes natural resources. You know, God created everything. All the natural resources for man's basic needs, for food, uh, clothing, and shelter. In order to be successful, he gave us the energy we need, and he inspires us to be creative and invent things too. As man discovers over time additional natural resources, his ability to cultivate and keep prospering increases. God gave man creativity and the strength to design build equipment, for example, to transform these natural resources into food and clothing and shelter. God made plenty of resources on the earth and there really is no shortage as we often hear by the liberal mass media. We just have to tap them. There's plenty of room for people to live. There's plenty of food available. We just need to tap it for the entire population. In fact, over 5 billion people in the world could live in the state of Texas alone in single family homes with front and backyards and be fed by the population just from the United States. You know, it's estimated that the present agricultural areas in the world could feed over 30 billion people. Now, we have about 7 billion people on the earth, so we could potentially feed more than four times the world's population right now and have plenty of food to spare. Again, I said, we just have to tap it and bring it to them. America has great future potential because it really does have great natural resources. One of our greatest is the American worker who can earn enough money and less hours of work, for example, to buy the same auto he produced. Compared to an Ush a Russian auto worker who will have to work almost eight times as long to buy that same auto. Why was this? Well, because at the end of the 19th century, American prosperity produced about half of everything with only 6% of the planet's population. This great success story can be tied to our founding documents, the Constitution of the United States, that our founders put in place so that its natural resources could be developed and economic liberty could be lived out in a free market system. In this free market system, entrepreneurs, business people could develop natural resources and then seek opportunities and in venture into many new industries, making a variety of new products and services and at the same time creating millions of jobs that we need in America right now. You know, God advises us through some of his first words in Scripture, in the book of Genesis, actually, chapter 1, verse 28, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. He gave us wonderful resources. He told Noah... Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. This includes the entire animal world. Look, although the world is not perfect as God originally created it, it is still good in many ways. God did not destroy the earth after the flood completely, but he left us with great treasures that he placed in the earth for us to discover and develop and prosper with in the future. But we know these radical environmentalists and government-sponsored programs unfortunately do not understand these God-given commands. So they oppose every man's effort to improve things in the world. Unfortunately for America, these people will oppose or put huge obstacles in the way for like a new residential development or a business park or a retail center or a factory. And they'll even interfere with the farm to grow its crops. No matter how carefully planned a project is to protect the environment around it, these radical environmentalists will show up and try to crush the new development. This over-regulation 
interferes with the development of our natural resources, and it's proved beyond a shadow of a doubt to be counterproductive to job creation and business growth. You just look at California, the great state of California, for example. They have over $25 billion in debt, huge annual deficits. They're going bankrupt because the environmentalists there have interfered so much with the private market. They've ruined it, and people and businesses are moving out. Listen to this in one case, the hardworking farmers in California in the San Joaquin Valley they had their entire water supply taken away from them and diverted to the Pacific Ocean. Believe it or not, the United States Department of Fish and Wildlife Service enforced their so-called Endangered Species Act. And they issued a biological opinion to enforce water reduction in the valley. So the government took away tens of billions of gallons of fresh mountain water from the farmers. This is the most fertile land in the world. And they left them with literally hundreds of thousands of the best agricultural land in the world parched. Oh, they did this for one reason, to safeguard the Delta smelt. Do you know what that is? It's a federally protected Hypomesis transpacifis. I think I said that right. 14 letter word. The end game of this draconian action left the area with over 40% unemployment. Do you see what's happening, folks? These stories even get worse. Everyone knows ice melts in the warmer seasons, right in the summer, and freezes in the cooler seasons, in the winter. Every year that happens. So when you see a photo of a nice big polar bear jumping off a piece of ice to take a dip, don't get alarmed. It's another bogus claim from the environmentalists that are saying that we'll see 20-foot increases in the sea levels. All this is baloney. It's had major errors in its computation, wrong data. And by the way, this was all totally dismissed by the British government, Al Gore's report. At least the British saw the obvious here. But folks, the truth is, is that God did create an earth that would not run out of its essential resources because of human development. He had it figured out long before we got involved. This bogus theory of man-made global warming we hear about over and over is not based on any scientific evidence either. The data is wrong again. And the cap-and-trade system will significantly damage the economy further. Look, slight increases in temperature are actually good for crops in terms of longer growing seasons. God said when he created the earth that everything was very good. So there is really no evidence of any indication that mankind will exhaust the earth's resources by developing them and using them wisely. Did you know that the agriculture organization, the FAO, shows that global forests are growing at a faster rate than in the 1950s? Reliable data also shows there's plenty of fresh drinking water. Accurate data also shows that the United States has a population density of about 80 persons per square mile. That's about 8 acres per person. There's plenty of room. Most countries have vast areas too of open space and farmland like us. In fact, the increase in our population has had almost no change in the amount of land used for crops, forests, and grasslands. There's plenty of room for everyone. The argument that those in favor of abortion, they use that, abortion proponents, use that argument that we're using up too much of our natural resources so we have to kill the unborn child. So they don't use the natural resources. 
Look at folks, in light of these factors we've laid out here, the government should not adopt policies to penalize productive individuals and companies and by limiting their energy use, like this cap-and-trade law that is totally bogus. This great free market development of America and its resources, it has brought millions of people from all over the world here to America to enjoy and prosper in a land of economic liberty.